My dear family, there is a tendency in a good portion of humanity, there is a tendency to reject, frown upon, or look upon with disbelief on the good deeds or amazing signs that close relatives are performing. There is a tendency in a good portion of humanity to just reject what is good. Think for instance, my dear family, if you have ever had a relative like that. Some, someone whom you know for a long time. Suddenly and out of nowhere, they have a complete change of heart. Suddenly, they start believing in Christ. Or they start doing wonderful and amazing good things, giving good advice and totally a different person. Or maybe it's the opposite. Maybe that person is you. Maybe it is you who have changed your heart. Maybe it is you who have now made the commitment to be at Sunday Mass, at weekly Masses, daily Masses, and now you have chosen to believe in Christ and you do wonderful and amazing things, giving good advice and just being an exemplar of faith. But your close relatives, your own family, out of anyone else is the one who may look upon that with disbelief, frowns upon it, rejects it. At family gatherings, if you are this person, you may be reminded that we should keep faith out of the conversation, to keep religion out of the festivity. My dear family, this tendency to do that is the result of sin. It is difficult for people to believe that someone is good, that has good intentions, more especially if those people come from your own family, your own friends, your own native town. And that is exactly what is happening in today's gospel. People see Jesus speaking and performing great miracles. He speaks with great eloquence at the synagogue. They see his great wisdom and they are astonished. They see the tremendous signs he has performed, yet they frown upon it. They reject it. They look upon them with disbelief. They start questioning his background. They start questioning his past. They start asking, is he not the son of a carpenter? Or in other words, they're asking that is he not the son of a type of person who works physically? There is no education needed to be a carpenter. So how does he get this wisdom? He must be false. Then they keep questioning and they ask, isn't he also the son of Mary? Or in other words, the question is, isn't he the son of a woman who claims that she became pregnant without intimacy? He must be false. He must be a false prophet. Everywhere Jesus went outside of his own native town, people welcomed him with the exception of few. Everywhere he traveled to, people received him with joy and with palms. But in his own native town, they start digging out his past. Hence why he replies with, a prophet is not welcomed in his own native town. My dear family, do we do that to our own family when they give us advice? Or does our family do that to us? If so, if we do that to our family, let us stop treating them as if they are foreigners. 
Let us stop digging out their faults and their pasts, their sins and their pains, and let us just forgive them. Or, if our family does that to us, then after today's gospel, just a few lines after, let us do what Jesus does. We keep praying for them. We still love them. We still respect them. But if they do not want to hear the gospel, we cannot force it. We as Christians, we as Catholics, we propose the faith. We do not impose the faith. Hence why it says just a few lines after today's gospel that Jesus went to the next town. So my dear family, if that is you in your own family and they do not want to hear the message, then maybe the prophet is not you. It's someone else. Go to the next town. Maybe it is someone else meant to convert them. Maybe it is someone else waiting to go there and give the gospel to them. Hence, my dear family, let us pray that we become a common unity, a community, a people who spread the gospel, propose the faith, and do not impose it. People who bring the good news to those who need it the most.